Hey there, welcome back to Widget Wisdom. Today we are diving into the world of clean architecture. This is a powerful architectural pattern that can help you build scalable and maintainable software. Whether you are a seasoned developer or just starting out, understanding clean architecture can be a game changer. So what exactly is clean architecture? In simple terms, it's a way to organize your code in a way that's easy to understand, maintain and test. Clean architecture focuses on keeping the core logic of your application independent of external factors like frameworks, databases, or UI. Let's break down clean architecture into its core components. It's often represented as a series of concentric circles, with the most inner circle being the most core logic and the outer circles being the most dependent on external elements. So, here first we have entities. These are the core business objects of your application. They represent the most inner circle and contain the most fundamental business rules. Then we have use cases. These defines the application specific business rules. They orchestrate the flow of data to and from the entities and manage the business processes. Then we have adapters. This layer contains adapters and converters that convert data from the format most convenient for the use cases and entities to the format most convenient for external agencies like the databases or the web. Then we have our framework part. So this is the outermost layer containing details such as UI frameworks, databases and other external system. This layer interacts with the outer world but should not directly influence the inner circle. The idea is that the dependencies point inwards. Inner layer knows nothing about outer layer. This way your core business logic is protected from external factors, making your application more stable and testable. Let's talk out the benefits of using clean architecture. Separation of concern, because by separating different layers, each part of the application can be developed and tested independently. Increased testability. Because the core logic is independent, you can easily write tests for your business rules without worrying about external dependencies. Then we have much more flexibility because you can easily swap out technologies like databases or UI frameworks without changing the core logic. Then we have great maintainability. The organized structure makes it easier to navigate and update the code base. But like all architectural pattern, clean architecture has its own downside increased complexity because it can be overkill for small projects adding unnecessary complexity great learning curve understanding and implementing the pattern can be challenging for beginners and the initial setup part because setting up a clean architecture can be a time consuming and require careful planning now let's put theory into practice with a simple app example using clean architecture we will create a flutter app that fetches data from a mock api and displays it don't worry, if you are not familiar with all the details, I'll guide you through each step. Let's start by setting up our project. Here I have opened Android Studio and here I'm naming my project as CleanArc example. Once the project is created, open it. Now let's start implementing the clean architecture. Now, first thing remove all these command and this state class. Now, we will define our core business logic which are the entities. We will be working with the simple post entity in this example. So. For that, go to the lib directory in your project, create a new folder named domain. Inside the domain folder, create another folder called entities. Now inside the entities folder, create a new file named post.dart. Now open the post.dart file. Here we are going to define our post class. So in this file, we will create a class named post. Since we will be receiving posts from API, this class will represent our post data. Here define three parameters for this class, id, title and body. These represents the post id, the title of the post and the content of the post respectively. Now as you can see, we have marked all fields as final because these values won't change once a post object is created. Now create the constructor for this class and please make sure to mark all these fields as required. Next, we need to define the business rules which are called use cases. These use cases will use the entities to perform specific action. In our case, we will create a use case for fetching posts. Let's create a new use case. Inside the domain folder, create another folder called use cases. Inside the use cases folder, create a new file named getPost.dart. 
Now open getPost.dart and let's define the getPost use case. In this file, create an abstract class post repository and this class have a method named as getPost which will be implemented by our repository. After this, create a class getPost that will take an instance of post repository and use it to fetch posts. So here after creating the instance, add the constructor for this class and then create a call method which will be of future of lists of posts type and this is future function so please add the async here then from this method just return the get post method of post repository and don't forget to mark await here so basically post repository is an abstract class meaning it only defines the structure but doesn't implement the functionality the get post class uses this repository to fetch a list of posts this way the use case is separated from the implementation detail of data fetching. Now let's move on the interface adapters. This layer handles converting data between the domain layer and external sources like APIs. So for that create a new folder called data in the lib directory. Inside the data folder create two more folders repositories and data sources. In the repositories folder create a new file named post repository implementation dot dot. Now, First let's implement the post repository implementation. In this file create post repository implement class and this class implement the post repository interface defined in our domain layer. This implementation will fetch data from a remote data source. So let's code it out. So inside this post repository implementation class we need to add one required method which is get post. Now and in the data sources folder create a new file named post remote data source dot dot post remote data source dot dot file and here in this file we will create a post remote data source class that will handle the actual api call to fetch the posts we will use the http package for this so go to the pubspec.yaml file and uh, here add the http package then tap on this pub get option to get all the dependencies now go to the data source file and here first create the http client variable and then import this http package then here create a fetch post method of type future of list of post model then add the async and come inside this method then here create a response variable and here add await then add client dot get then here we need to pass the uri so here add uri dot parse then here add the url of your get api and don't worry about this url i provide the link in the description then here add a check that if response status code is 200 then come inside this condition and here create a json response variable and here decode the json body then from here return json response like this here i have done and then add the else condition and throw exception when status code is not 200 then go to the post repository implementation class and here first create the post remote data source variable then add the constructor of this class and add this field inside this constructor then come to the get posts method and here create a final post and assign the fetch post method of remote data source and also add await here then also from here return the list of posts like here i'm doing as you can see we have created a class post repository implementation that implements post repository it uses post remote data source to fetch posts and convert them into a list of post entities to handle the data format from our api we will create a model class this class will mirror the structure of the JSON data we receive. Let's create our data model. Inside the data folder, create a, another folder named model. In the models folder, create a new file named postmodel.dart. Now open postmodel.dart and let's define the postmodel class. So here add the postmodel class that will extend post class. Then here add the postmodel and here add id, title and body parameter and mark all these as required. Then add the super for this method. Then add the factory method for this like here I'm doing. So here we have extended the post class to create a post model class. This model includes a from JSON factory constructor that creates a post model object from a JSON map. Finally, let's implement the UI layer. This will be our Flutter apps presentation layer where we will display the post. Let's set up our UI. Inside the lib folder, create a new folder named presentation. Inside the presentation folder, create another folder named pages. In the pages folder create a new file named posts page.dart now open post page.dart and let's implement the ui in this file we will create a post page widget that displays a list of posts 
we will use future builder widget to handle the asynchronous loading of post now inside this post page class here first create a stateless widget as post page now come inside this widget and here create the get post variable and uh, then here create the post page constructor and mark this field as required inside this constructor now come inside the build method and here first add the scaffold widget then inside the scaffold add an app bar and for the title of app bar give it a text widget and here add clean architecture example now come inside the body part and for body we are going to use future builder so here add future builder then add here its return type which is going to be list of post then here add the future so its future is going to be get post which we will pass through the main.dart file then here add the builder function for builder it requires context and snapshot so add that then add the curly braces then here check if connection state is waiting in that case we will show a loading indicator so from here return a center widget then inside it add the circular progress indicator then check if snapshot has error in that case we want to show error to the user so here again return a center widget with the child of text widget and for text add the error then take the error form snapshot then again add a condition that if snapshot has no data or snapshot data is empty in that case we want to show the user that there is nothing to show from again here return a center widget with the child of text which will say no posts available after all these condition again add else statement and from here return a list view builder and the item count is going to be the length of data of snapshot and for item builder add the context and index and from here return a list style widget whose title is going to be the snapshots data and current index and the title of post and do the same for subtitle but change the title to the body now in the post page widget we are using a future builder to asynchronously fetch and display the post the get post function is called and based on its state we display a loading indicator an error message or the list of post lastly let's set up our main.dart file to wire everything together in main.dart file we will inject our dependencies and set up the app's main entry point so first come into the main function and here create an instance of post remote data source and pass the http.client thing here then create the instance of post repository and inside this post repository implementation pass the post remote data source instance then create the get posts instance and pass the post repository now come to the my app class and here create a variable of get post and take this field from its constructor now go to the main function and pass this get post now come to this build section and from material app add the home as post page and pass the get post to it so in the main.dart file we have created instance of our data source repository and use case then pass the get post use case to the my app widget this is where we connect the dots between the various layer of our architecture now save the code and run the application so app has been installed successfully and as you can see initially we had our loading indicator and then we have the list of post so that's a wrap up we have walked through setting up a simple flutter app using clean architecture this architecture might seem complex at first but it provides a robust structure for building scalable and maintainable application remember the goal is to keep your core business logic independent of external systems making your app more flexible and testable if you enjoyed this tutorial and want more content like this don't forget to like subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications if you have any questions drop them in the comments below thanks for watching and see you in the next video on widget wisdom